everyone, my name is Ms. Alicia Donga. Welcome to my Bible story lessons. Today, we're going to hear about a king who was called King Hezekiah. This story is going to come from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 20, from verse 12 to 19. And I'll start my story with a question. When is a time you had to admit to doing wrong? Today we are going to hear about a king who had to admit he was wrong. Okay? I'll start my story. Long, long time ago, in the Old Testament days, there was a man who was called Hezekiah. Hezekiah was one of the kings of Judah. He had a father who was called Ahaz. And Ahaz, the father to Hezekiah, was a very, very evil man. Very evil. He used to worship idols and false gods from a neighboring country, the country that surrounded him. So Hezekiah didn't want to be like his father. As he became the king, you know what? He decided to change everything. The dad, who was Ahaz, had already closed the temple and nobody used to go to the temple to worship God. So the doors of the temple were broken and it was the temple, inside the temple was very dirty. Nobody used to go there because Ahaz used to worship the idols from the neighboring country. So when Hezekiah became a king. He decided to repair the doors of God's temple and rebuild the temple again. So you know what he did? He called those people who used to serve in the temple. He called all the men who used to serve in the temple with their families to come and, and clean the temple and make sure it is clean for people to come and worship God. So they came, they called their people, the men used to serve in the temple came with their families. They cleaned the whole temple and they repaired all the doors that were broken. And after that, people were started to be invited to come and worship. Those days, they used to call church temple. So, and when I say temple, I mean the church, okay? So we are going to draw the temple's door that were broken and the ones that were repaired, okay? Now, I'm going to draw on my drawing pad. You can draw together with me. So here is the temple. You see? So we're going to draw like we are drawing. There you go. This is the temple. And we're going to draw a broken door. This is the door, and those doors used to be very, very, very broken. So, see? It's broken doors. So, they had to be repaired. This is a broken door. It's because people didn't use to go to worship there. Because Hezekiah's dad had closed all the doors. And nobody was supposed to go and worship because they used to worship the idols, false gods from the neighboring countries. There you go. Can you see broken doors? Now we are going to draw the repaired ones, the repaired temple for people to come and worship. Here you go. So, they repaired the doors. And the doors were repaired. People were ready to come in and worship God. See, here are the doors. The repaired doors. The broken doors. And they already repaired the temple. Okay? Yes, you will go ahead and draw yours like mine. When the temple was ready, King Hezekiah 
sent letters and messengers to everyone, everyone in Judah and in Israel. So they went, they were told, and when people heard about it, they were so excited and so happy. Eh? As soon as the day of Pentecost came, a lot of people, a crowd of people came in to worship God in Jerusalem. For the first time in a long time, people from Judah and Israel came together and worshiped God as God had told them to do. Imagine. So they celebrated God's goodness. They had fun. They worshiped God until they couldn't stop. They continued for another whole week. For another whole week. Can you imagine? So we're going to draw a crowd of people so excited worshiping God together. And those are people from Israel and from Judah. Okay? Here's my drawing pad. So we're going to see a crowd of people. We're just going to draw their heads like this using C's, bended C's. Mm, that makes a lot of people, a crowd of people came to worship God. Mm, and they were so excited and so happy to worship God for the first time in a very long, 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 long time. They had not worshipped God together. And they were so happy because Hezekiah had opened the temples for people to come and worship God. You see, there's a crowd of people. You see, there you go. Wow. Wow. So they celebrated for another whole week. They celebrated God's goodness for a whole week. So then, when they were celebrating, a wonderful thing happened. After the great celebration, they decided, why don't we get rid of all these idols and this false god? We remove them from this place and we start worshipping God and the only true God. So you know what they did? They got rid of all the idols and all the false gods and they cleaned up the whole place. And from that day, they decided they are going to worship the only true God. It was a good thing they started doing at that time. Okay? So, because they decided to worship the only true God, I'm going to draw you for this to draw for you on my drawing pad. This idol that they've gotten rid of it. And we are going to slash it and say no worshiping idols or false god. We are only going to worship the only one true God. The God who created the heaven and the earth. Okay? So, see, we're going to draw the idol god. Here it is. The idol god. See, looks funny. And his eyes. Its eyes. And its mouth. See, it looked like that. And let's put it in a circle. Does that one look like a circle? And then we slash it because no worshipping idols. Slash it. Can you see? No worshipping false god or idols. Only the true, only the one true God who created the heaven and earth. Okay? And because King Hezekiah led his people in doing what was right, eh? God made life peaceful and good for the people of Judah. Hey, it was so nice. The Bible tells us that King Hezekiah rebuilt many walls 
and towers in Jerusalem. Hmm? He built a long tunnel system to, that used to, to bring water in the city. It used to bring water in the city of Jerusalem. Hmm? And he also built buildings for storing food, extra food that they got from a good harvest. So we are also going to draw these long walls that he rebuilt and the tunnel system that used to bring in water in the city of Jerusalem. Okay? Yes. Now you see the walls. You have your drawing pad. You can draw together with me. So these are the walls of Jerusalem that were repaired. Can you see? I'm going to draw a wall. This wall here, and there's a tunnel there, like that. And another wall there. Can you see? See? And then, here are the walls. Here is the wall. Can you see? And there was a tunnel system that used to bring in water to the city. There you go. There you go. And this is the water. Can you see? Yes, imagine. imagine. So, they had done so much in that city. Imagine. Even when the powerful king of Assyria, now those are the people who used to, read, to, to, used to live around them, the neighboring country, like there was a one who was called King Assyria and his army. Eh? They wanted to come and destroy them, to come and destroy Judah and Jerusalem. Hey, Hezekiah told his men, do not fear, be brave, be brave. We are not going to fear. So they decided to pray. King Hezekiah and one of the prophets who used to live there, he was called Isaiah. They prayed, they prayed to God. Eh? And you know what God did? He sent an angel. He sent an angel to come and deal with all those army. And you know what? They were all killed, all of them. The people of Judah and Israel didn't fight them. What happened? It is the angel that was sent who came and got rid of that army. And they were all finished. They were all finished. So I'm going to draw for you a person praying like... Uh, King Hezekiah was praying with prophet Isaiah. But we're going to draw only one person praying, showing that they prayed to God. And you know what? God heard them. Wow. He always hears our prayer when we call him. When you're in trouble, just pray and he will send his angels to take charge over you. And you will be protected eh? and nobody will hurt you. See? So we are going to draw using Abandoned seven, eh? like that, and then we give him an eye that is a closed, like that, and the nose and the mouth, and this is an ear. Can you see? And this is the hand, his hand here. He's praying. You see? He's praying. This is the person closed his eyes praying. Can you see? Okay. Okay. So they prayed and God did a miracle for them. He sent an angel who came and got rid of all the army that wanted to destroy them, okay? So Hezekiah, most of his life obeyed God. He was a good person. 
But you know what? Even good people sometimes, they do wrong. Even us sometimes, we do wrong. We are not perfect. Only God is perfect. Even us sometimes, we do wrong. And that's what, that is what happened to King Hezekiah. You know what? He did wrong. What wrong did he do? Hey, he became so proud of himself. After looking at what he has achieved, making the building the wall, the tunnel system, and everything was good. The harvest they had and the buildings to keep their harvest. And everybody was happy and excited because even the doors of the, of the temples were open. They could worship God. And he became so proud. He used to show off everything he had. And when he's showing off, not with a good heart because that is pride. He used to show off and he was very proud of himself and what he has achieved. And he forgot it's God who helped him to get all that. He forgot it was God who helped him. So we are going to draw something and you're going to tell me what it means. Here, I'll draw. Who can tell me what this? Can you be able to read this word? Ah, this letter. I. 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 He became too much of himself. It's I. It is him alone. It's like when you say, I have this, I want this, I own this, I was bought for this one. Everything is I, I, I. It's not bad to tell people what you have, but sometimes it's very wrong because sometimes you just won't. It is just pride. You're showing off, which is not very good. You have a good heart when you're showing people what you have. But not you're showing them to show them that you are so up there like you're superior and they are so down here. You got everything and they don't have. No, that is not a good motive. So this is what King Hezekiah did. You see, he was full of himself. I, 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 everything. I have made this. I have done this. I have built this. You see, he forgot it's God who did it. And because he was too much of himself. He was full of himself. What do you call that when someone is full of himself? It's called what? That is called pride. So we are going to add here P and what? R. And here we add D and E. It becomes the word pride. Okay? Don't be full of yourself. Don't be full of I, I, I. I, everything. I have this. I own this. I want this. All that. Everything is you. Forgetting it's God who provides. And it's God who gives us all that. Okay? So don't be full of yourself, which is pride. Okay? Okay? Yes. Yes, don't be full of yourself. So that is what happened to King Hezekiah. He was full of himself. Instead, he, he, instead of trusting in God, he began to trust in himself. And you know what happened? God prophet, who was called Isaiah, came to him and warned him and told him, Hezekiah, I have come to tell you, God is going to take all all these things you are proud of so you better repent you're too much of yourself you're too proud so don't be proud turn away from that pride and become humble repent because you're too proud god is going to take everything you know what he did he was so sorry of what he has done he decided he's going to repent so he repented for not having to trust in God and start trusting in himself and the things he has accomplished. Hezekiah repented before God and all the people, all the people in that place, in Jerusalem and Judah, they all repented before God. They went ahead of, they went before God and repent and asked for forgiveness. And you know what? God forgave them. 
and after he forgave them ah there was a lot of peace god gave them peace and happy times in the days when hezekiah was their king so they were so happy because they all turned back to god we are going to draw something that shows a turn when you have done wrong don't just stay there take a big turn if you know you've been doing wrong and eh, like king hezekiah when he realized he was doing wrong what did he do he took a turn so i'm going to draw for you something you see let me draw for you something this is what happened hezekiah after he realized he was wrong he was too proud he take he took a u turn he took a what a u turn a u turn is when you are going this way and you decide and you realize this was the wrong way to go or these are the wrong things i was doing i'm i'm doing i decide to take a u turn and start going the right direction so that's what king hezekiah did so he was going this way that was a wrong way pride full of himself eh and boasting to everybody ha ah, when he reached here who came and warned him the prophet who prophet isaiah and you know what he did when he realized when he was told that you know what he did he take a u turn like this he took a u turn he take a u turn when you realize you're doing wrong so that's what happened to king hezekiah he realized he was so proud he was full of pride of himself too and he took a u turn to become a good person again okay you have done wrong in case you have done wrong to your friends you have done wrong to your mom you have done wrong to your nanny your auntie your brother big brother or small brother you be not you have not been so kind and so good to them don't just stay there and become so proud of yourself that you can't apologize or you can't go and say sorry all that you need to do you can go lock yourself in a room pray pray and tell god to forgive you pray and ask god for forgiveness or you after you have asked for god, god for forgiveness if you have courage go and meet those people and tell them sorry yes and if you're that person who locks their cells in their room and do funny things that are not godly watch bad movies that are not supposed to be watched the nightmares movie movie that are giving you nightmares and you are afraid and of of night you afraid of, movies that are full of witches and they are not helping you at the end of the day after watching the movies you feel like you're so afraid and there's someone following you and you can't stay alone you want to stay with people you see you should stop those are not the right things to watch anything that gives you fear in your heart it's not the right thing to watch anything that gives you fear at the end of watching you should not watch it because it's not helping you it's just giving you a lot of fear and you you live fearing your life is full of fear you can't even be left alone in the house because of what what you watched the nightmare at even when you hear a thunderstorm and it's a blessing to hear a thunderstorm it's a creation of god that's god creation thunderstorm are god creation but you see because you have watched so many bad movies when you hear a thunderstorm you want to hide under your bed you see or you want to go and hide where there are people and you you are so afraid because you've been watching bad things bad movies stop take a u turn and start doing the right thing look for movies who are christian movies they are godly movies by the way they are christian so many christian movies movies you can watch for children and even for teenagers you can but they are there but they are christian movies they have no fear they have nothing to keep to make you fear or to bring fear into your into your life okay
So every day, make sure you're responsible of yourself. What you watch. You see that song that says, oh, be careful little eyes, what you see. Or be careful little, little ears, what you hear. Or be careful little mouth, what you see. You know what? God watches over us. Even when we are hiding and watching stuff that are not supposed to be watched. Or doing things that are not supposed to be done. God can see us because he sees everything. He sees all. He can see it in the deepest part of our heart. Even what we are thinking, he can see. So you know what? Purpose to be a good person. Purpose to be a God-fearing child. And you know, if you, are, if you, you obey, if you purpose to love God, you will not do those things. Always God will lead you to the right things, to the right movies to the right friends, okay? God wants us to always admit when we are wrong and ask for forgiveness, okay? Because it never helps to keep doing wrong. It will only land you into trouble. So the best thing, if you realize you've done wrong or you've been doing wrong, it's never too late. It's never too late to ask for forgiveness. Don't feel condemned. Don't feel bad but they will not forgive you. You pray and ask God to forgive you. Then, if they are friends who maybe you had stopped playing with them, go meet them. In your home, if you, they are you're around you, you can go just say hi to them and that's it, and start playing with them. But at this time, I don't think we are going outside. We are all indoors, not playing with friends outside because of the virus. So, just stay in. And you can even text them, call them, I mean, Zoom them and tell them sorry, okay? Yes, let's always, always admit when we are wrong and ask for forgiveness. And God is so faithful to forgive us, okay? Yes. So I'll ask you a question to see whether you have understood my story, okay? How did Hezekiah show he wanted to obey God? How did he show he wanted to obey God? Mm -hmm. He repaired the temple's door and fixed what? Temples. And also, he invited people to come and worship God. Okay. Another question is, how did the people show they wanted to obey God? By doing what? By getting rid of all the idols and false gods. Okay. When Hezekiah became a proud person, how did God show Hezekiah that his actions were wrong? He warned him. Uh -huh. He warned him through a prophet called who? Isaiah. So he was warned of what he was doing. So always, don't, don't wait for anyone to come and warn you. Sometimes it's good to just sit down somewhere and think about your actions. Are you good to others? Just sit down and think, am I good to my nanny? Am I good to my auntie? Am I good to my brothers and sister? Oh, I need some change. Do I need a U-turn? Do I need a U-turn when I'm going wrong? And I, I just take a U-turn and start doing right and start being kind and start being loving and start being humble without pride. Those are the things you just need to sit down and evaluate your heart. Like to evaluate is to check your heart and see, have I been a good person? Have I been a good child? Have I been rude to others, to my mom, to my dad? Yeah, you need to check on that. And ask for forgiveness. Take a U-turn of what you've been doing wrong and ask for forgiveness like King Hezekiah, and God will forgive you. When you admit your wrong and ask for forgiveness, he will surely forgive you, okay? Yes, go ahead and do that. If you've been going on the wrong way, take a U-turn. If you've been a good child all the way, continue being a good child, okay? Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed my story. Bye-bye for now. <music> Hi and welcome to Elevation Community Chapel, Elevate TV. 
We are delighted to have you here. My name is Pastor Robert Njuguna and I'm delighted to be your host today uh, to just take you through to, through our session today of just breaking the word of God. I hope you've had a wonderful time, our children, with teacher Alicia. And I know we missed the worship team, but we decided to just take a hold on it because what is coming up is that we're going back to church. So we're going to have some praise and worship team back in the house of God. We thank God for you. I hope you You've had a wonderful week and you are doing well. With me today is obviously Pastor Peter Kimari, our senior pastor. Mm-hmm. And we are delighted to have you, sir, in the house. Karibu sana. Thanks for having me, Robert. It's always yes. a pleasure. Yes. Uh-huh. And we have uh, Minister Ganda in the house. Karibu sana. Asante sana, hey. uh, Pastor. Today you are broken down. Easy. Easy. Very easy. Ready to break the word of God. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, welcome. Welcome. It's good to have you, men of God. And um, as we begin, we're going to start with the word of prayer. Mm-hmm. And I'll ask Minister Ganda to please pray for us yeah, as we begin. Okay, let us pray. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we glorify your holy name. Thank you for this day that you've granted unto us for us to rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, we just pray that you give us utterance and you give the viewers watching understanding. We pray this trusting and believing in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Well, our viewers, we'd like you to get your Bibles and get your notebooks. I know so many people have been asking, Mm -hmm. uh, men of God, what is the Lord saying in this season? Mm -hmm. What is God saying? Mm -hmm. What what is happening in this nation? Mm -hmm. And, And so many prophecies have come, so many... Mm-hmm. Um, things have been interpreted but as I say let's just look at it and, and see what God is doing let's see the hand of the Lord the fact that you've been kept mm. throughout this season throughout this storm that the Lord has been there and he has been faithful and he has kept you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. because so many things will be said mm-hmm. about this thing but what God is, 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 is doing is that he is keeping you and you are well kept. If you're watching us today, it means mm. that the Lord has kept you. Very true. And that is something to be grateful and 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 and, and just thank God for. Mm. That you are alive today, you are healthy, and God has kept you. And mm. we thank God because we've had good report. I know many people are focusing on how many people have died, but we want to focus on how many people have recovered. Mm. Mm. Imagine. And how many people has the Lord kept. Mm-hmm. So you, you are still alive, so you're still well. Let's thank God for that. Amen. Amen. And today we want to focus on one of the scriptures that just pops out every time you read about it. And it's in Exodus chapter 3. And it's a powerful, powerful, uh, <clears throat> juicy, mm. you know, scripture. And so many questions people ask themselves. Um, how do I identify the calling of God in my life? Mm-hmm. You know, Pasi. You know, those are some of the things that we wanted to share. Mm-hmm. You know, I, uh, Pasi's story is very funny. He was in a club somewhere and he will tell you <laughs> about the calling of God in his life. Amen. So, you know, God can call you from anywhere and we're going mm-hmm. to see mm-hmm. what happens when you receive the calling of God, the assignment of God in your mm-hmm. life and, and how God introduced himself to Moses. So, uh, tune in. I know you're going to be blessed. So we begin in Exodus chapter 3 from verse 1. Can I read it? Yes, yes, please. Yes. Mm. It says, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his Mm -hmm. (laughs) father-in-law. A prince. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Once a prince in Egypt. Imagine. He was working, not for himself, Mm. but for his Mm father-in-law. It says, The priest of Midian, and and he led the flock to the back of the desert, and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Mm. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Mm. Then Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. This guy had been there for 40 years. Mm-hmm. So this was not a normal sight. Mm, it, was a, it was a phenomenal sight. Yeah. <laughs> it was a phenomenal sight. Mm-hmm. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. 
And he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people uh, who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters masters mm. for i know their sorrows so i have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the egyptians and to bring them up from that land to to a good and large land a land to a land flowing with milk and honey to a place of the to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites and the Coronites. <laughs> now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, uh-huh. and I have also seen the oppression which, uh, with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Uh-huh. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people the children of Israel out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? And in verse 12 he says, So he said, I will certainly be with you and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. I know we'll continue with that scripture as, 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 we, as we extrapolate the word of God and we talk about the word of God today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I want to just start off. Um, mm. and, and, and you know, this scripture just introduces us um, to what Moses has become mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. after he came out of Egypt. Moses has now become mm-hmm. a shepherd. A shepherd, uh-huh. And he is not even tending to his own flock. <laughs> uh-huh. He is tending to his father's in law mm-hmm. flock. Mm. A prince in Egypt. A, a former prince. A no? former prince in Egypt. Mm. Uh, gentlemen, I, I, I want us to start off with oh. the highs and lows of what happens in our lives because oh. uh-huh. this is very profound. You know, we mm-hmm. ask ourselves, why do, you know, we live our lives and we always think that our lives are always in a trajectory mm-hmm. of going up. But there are ups and downs in life mm-hmm. and we have to learn how to cope with them. Mm-hmm. Minister mm-hmm. Frank, mm-hmm. a prince in Egypt. Imagine. Now he's a shepherd. What is going on in his mind, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> interesting, interesting. Yes. Actually, we see um, Moses. Yes. As you've said, this is a person who, you, who was used to a life of royalty. Mm-hmm. Yes. This is a person who was most respected. Yes. A person who grew in a life that each and every one of us mm. would want. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you see, uh, this very person mm. being taken to a desert life. Yes. And there is always something interesting about God. Because you see God in the Bible, if you relate with various people yeah. in the Bible, mm-hmm. they've been taken through a desert experience. All right. When we look at Moses mm. himself, uh, what we are reading today, yeah. we see Moses being in the desert mm. for 40 years. Yeah. When we focus on the John the Baptist, mm. uh, the Baptist, John the Baptist, mm. he was also had a desert experience. He had a desert experience down in the Dead Sea. Mm. Huh? Mm. When we look at El- Elijah, was a desert man actually. <laughs> he was in the desert almost. His ex- he, uh, we can actually say he is a, a, a man of the desert. Mm. When we look at Paul, mm-hmm. yeah, for three years, full three years after his conversion, mm-hmm. mm. he was also in a desert place. 
somewhere in Arabia. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe I finish with someone like John the Revelator. Mm -hmm. We see also him being isolated, being in a in an island, a deserted area yes. in an island of Patmos. Mm. And what this tells me and you yes. is this. When God wants to use me, or yeah. God, when God wants to use you, yeah. when God wants to use us, mm. yeah, profoundly, yeah. he takes us through the desert experience. Yeah. Because even me, in my life, I have some desert experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Because you see, it is only in the desert mm. that Moses found himself now mm. inclined to the will of God. Yeah. Because as we've read, mm -hmm. yeah, we see Moses probably if Moses was still mm. in Egypt. Mm. having that life that he was having in Egypt. Yeah. Probably when he, 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 if he was still in, with that Egypt mentality, mm. probably if he would have seen the burning bush, he wouldn't have turned. Mm. Eh? He would have said it's magic. Yeah, yeah. probably he wouldn't mm. have focused uh, mm. his attention on that scene. Mm. But you see, sometimes you are put in a uh, situation because God wants to recall mm. our attention to exactly what he wants to do in our lives. Mm -hmm. Pastor, there are people who have, been, mm -hmm. have, have faced corona right now. Mm -hmm. And they were places where everything was, all, was okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But from March... Everything has just things, been going down. Things began to mm. dip and everything mm. just... The desert experience is now there. You know, mm. you are coming from a prince. Yeah. Now you are tending to your yeah. Jethro's, mm -hmm. you know, uh, flock. Yeah. And, and, and we, uh, like yesterday, someone called me and he was... Because we had advertised some jobs in yes. our place of work. Mm -hmm. And someone called me, a friend of mine. And I'm like, dude, I know you and I know you have a company. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to work for us? Yes. <laughs> And I even told him the salary. I'm like, why are you? Why do you want Akanyambia Roba Manze Vitu I know him. I know he's a, he has his own company. He actually supplies to the government, mm. county government. Imagine. And he was telling me, Manze Sai Roba means Yangali. You mean Angali? I have a family mm. and someone to feed. Mm -hmm. I have children who are looking at up to me. Mm -hmm. So there are people who've gone from. Prince, mm. and now you're in the desert experience. In, in the backside of the desert. In uh, the backside, backside of the desert. desert. Mm -hmm. Could that be what is happening right now? Penniless, so, without yeah. a credit card, without <laughs> anything, without a bank. Without, you know, uh, you know, you're coming from a place where yeah. everything, everything yeah. was on beck and call. Yes. You, you had people mm. surrounded you. Yes. You had to, you, in case of it, you read that in. Um, you can imagine the, the kind of lifestyle yes. that Moses had. He was called the daughter of Pharaoh. He was the son of the daughter of he, the Pharaoh. Yeah. Yes. He was the son of the daughter of Pharaoh. Yes. You tell me if if anybody knew affluence, mm. Moses knew affluence. Yes. And there's a scripture I'd like to draw your attention. Mm. Uh, it's in uh, it's in uh, it's in Hebrews. Yes. And I'm going to read it. Uh, Please do. Uh, it's 11.24. It says, mm. By faith, Moses, mm. when he came, when he was come to ears, mm -hmm. refused to be called the son, the, the, to, to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Mm. Choosing rather mm -hmm. to suffer affliction yes. with the people of God. Come on now. Than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, mm. esteeming the reproach mm. of Christ's greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of reward. Mm. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. Yeah. For he endured, as seeing him who 
seeing him who is invisible mm. invisible through faith he kept the passover mm. i believe for him to come out yes from a place where he's refusing to be identified with the affluent the mm. affluent life yes. of egypt mm. there's something greater that was calling him yes because every 7 billion 7.5 billion children who are born on the face of the earth mm. god puts something in them amen every child that is born on the earth god has already put something a gift to be enjoyed in the world amen so god god is not the one who now can mm. uh, can uh, can can get can get you you as a child yeah and leave you empty yeah he has an intention yeah frank you have an in, you you have to come and make a deposit on the earth and deposit you will make because god did not bring you into this world empty because life is spiritual mm. and we've got to control life from the realm of the spirit that's what i keep saying amen life is spiritual there is a true north mm. that this this uh there's something greater than ourselves mm. that keep calling us mm. how do you refuse a life of influence mm. affluence and influence yeah to be in a position to be to be in a place where everything is on back and call yeah. and you just decide no mm. i'm going to disregard everything and i'm going to follow my purpose and we have such stories I'm, yeah. I'm 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 blessed by the fact that you say that because mm. if you look at the name Moses itself yeah. it means to draw out to yes. draw out mm-hmm. you yeah. look at it from the first mm-hmm. even the time that Moses was born mm-hmm. he was born when there was calamity you know Imagine, uh-huh. Pharaoh has just decided I'm going to kill people mm-hmm. this is the time I want to kill all the boys mm-hmm. and that's the time God brings a, a, a drawing out he brings a deliverer mm-hmm. and that particular point imagine and then we see now in the back side of the desert mm-hmm. now god draws trying to draw his mm-hmm. attention mm-hmm. because no, he has mm-hmm. reached to a point where mm-hmm. now he is ready to do something or to to draw the gift mm-hmm. out of you and and one of the things that challenges me is that we always look at things when they are good and we think that's the best time to exercise our gift mm-hmm. but sometimes our gifts are actually exercised when there is calamity by the way it's very it's quite true uh, sometimes our gifts actually mm-hmm. sprout out mm-hmm. and they become they are magnified mm-hmm. when there this is crisis. need yeah. there is crisis mm-hmm. because even if you look at inventions per se mm-hmm. most of the inventions have been born out of necessity yeah it's very true you very know true, there's a problem totally totally agree with you there's yeah. a problem and that's mm-hmm. when we yeah. see people coming uh-huh. up with solutions mm-hmm. and in the same thing that is happening in the kingdom of god mm-hmm. yeah we are seeing there's a problem and then god, god brings someone else god yeah. brings moses mm-hmm. there is a nation the nation is 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 in it's in tamil he brings a gideon imagine a, he chooses a boy mm-hmm. out of david and to just you know to come uh, here to and 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 and, and i'm always goodness, uh-huh. challenged by the fact that uh-huh. some of the things god is not bringing solutions from a, from all over uh-huh. he's drawing those solutions it's from from us. within us Yes, but from within us. Uh, this is quite profound. Mm. This is quite profound because you see it is it's amazing what God can do. Yes. With a man that is yielded to him. Amen. He was called by God but did not know the technology of executing the mandate of God yes. in his life. Yes. Yes. But we see him now God now beginning to show God beginning to respond to mm. him. Because sometimes we tend to think that God is delaying and we tend to think that God is uh God is a bit uh, withdrawn from us. Mm. But God has always been in the same same place that we left him. Yeah. And uh we see that in the life of Moses. Mm. It is a time of crisis. Mm. Right now the world is going through crisis. Mm. But uh but the strength within is mm. going to be revealed amen by the god that is within us Hallelujah. we the, we mentioned there's a scripture that mentions that he now considered him who was invisible mm. 
to walk by faith you have to know that there's somebody out there mm. looking up for your good amen and you might be out there and thinking that the world has come to an end mm. but i'm telling you this an invisible god that you need to connect with mm. and uh, that invisible god the, the moment you begin to dr- when he begins to draw you mm. just begin to connect mm. with him amen because life is not just physicality mm. the life is spiritual mm. life is spiritual even in this time of covid this covid has come it is going to really the enemy has has intended it for the worst yes but it's going to bring out the best in people amen yeah. amen because there's always a provision and one of the one of the most surprising thing mm. when uh, when you look at uh, when you look at the script when uh, when Moses is getting the attention mm. because it is something that draws him there there's an attention mm. he's somebody who observes mm. things mm. so he looks and he sees a burning bush mm. and this burning bush something is happening that burning bush is burning but it's not consumed and it has no time to consume. Mm. It tells you that eternity when eternity falls onto onto Come an individual. On yeah. Everything the the natural collapses. Mm. 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 The natural this is what I'm I'm learning from scriptures that yes. uh, as we engage with God the natural will collapse. Mm. And then the the other thing that we should f- we should not forget is the faces that Moses goes through mm. is a face of shame. Mm. you can imagine yeah. shame yeah you've lost your job you've lost your title you've lost your title yeah. you've do, you have you have no you have no name you have no credential mm. there comes a time and i think i've hit a rock bottom in my life mm. where i had to just look at my a life like this and just say god you're the only thing i have in this world mm. it's not even my family mm. it, and with tears you can you can begin to connect back to god and say god you're the only thing i have you're the only friend i have pass let's stick there because i i know yeah. there are people who have hit mm-hmm. rock bottom mm-hmm. uh, even in this time as mm-hmm, yeah. minister ganda mm-hmm. you have been there mm-hmm. where you've hit rock bottom mm-hmm. how do i come out of it because i'm looking at this guy mm-hmm. and and god has not given one of the things that i've understood about god mm-hmm. is that he's not a respect of age imad oh, by the way uh, <laughs> he's not a respect of age he will good. choose a young boy called david mm-hmm. and he will still come to an old man at 80 years old mm-hmm. and that's when he begins his ministry imagine imagine <laughs> who has been in the back side of the desert for 40 years 40 looking years. for your fathers in law mm-hmm. sheep Uh-huh. I mean, uh, Pasi, see see horses. Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> They're not horses. Kondo. Imagine, imagine. Uh. There are people right now who are at rock bottom. Mm-hmm. How do they come up? How do what do you tell them so that they understand that God has not even still given up on them? Mm-hmm. Maybe Minister Frank. Yes. <laughs> okay, maybe mm. let me just say something small, yeah. Mm. You see in uh, Exodus 3. Yes. God introduces himself um uh, in the way that the Israelites knew him. Mm. I am the God mm. of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. Mm. and I am the god of Jacob. Yes. But interestingly, we see Moses going a notch father mm. and asking God, God, if I go to Egypt and they ask you who you are, who will I say sent me? Mm. And you know the same very god being all knowing knew that that very question will mm. not be asked mm. because when Moses went to Egypt no one asked him who sent him mm. but you see at that point in time Moses 
wanted to know to get a revelation of God mm. for himself. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because here we see God revealing himself to him mm. and introducing himself. And you see sometimes we find ourselves in that rock bottom. Yeah. We've heard about God through people. Mm. But we've never related. Mm. And that particular time Moses really wanted to know is this a God whom I can depend on? Mm. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes we really want to follow but we cannot follow. Yes. Why? Because there's something yes. in us yes. that is fearful. Mm. Mm-hmm. God, do I go all in for those mm-hmm. people who have mm-hmm. done gambling? Mm. Do I go all in or do I fold? <laughs> yes. Yeah? Is this a time to, for me to fold? Or is this a time for me to go all in? Mm. So Moses was in that space with God. Mm. And for you to know that God really honors mm. even that small thing that you think is insignificant. Mm. God had to reveal himself, himself mm-hmm. to Moses mm. and give Moses an assurance that I am I am I am many I am the eternal nowness Mm-hmm. Whatever you want me to be, Moses, mm-hmm. I am. Mm-hmm. And you see, most Christians, I call them, are in like a sagging mattress. You see, a sagging mattress, there is a peak, mm-hmm. eh? and then there is a low, and another peak. As long as we know that our sins are forgiven, we are very secure in our past. Mm -hmm. And also, we are also very secure in our future. uh, Because we know Mm -hmm. in our walk, our future is taken care of and our past is also taken care of. Mm -hmm. But the now, Mm -hmm. that place where you find yourself in the rock bottom, the sagging mattress. Mm. You know, you really want that assurance that indeed yeah. God will be that you want him to be at mm. that particular time. Amen. Pasi, mm-hmm. 80 years old. Mm-hmm. God can never use me. I have messed up. Mm-hmm. Ah, God can never use me. Mm-hmm. I have hit rock bottom. Mm-hmm. God can never use me. Imagine. I am a shepherd. Imagine. <laughs> Dealing with sheep. Imagine. How can God use me? Uh-huh. Na uza mitumba. Imagine. Mimi waga tu na brush viatu za watu wapa. You know, how can God use me? Because we look at ourselves. Mm-hmm. Where we are. Yes. Mm-hmm. But God comes when this man is 80 years old mm-hmm. and he gets his attention. Mm-hmm. Reveal himself. Someone is outside there and he's saying, mm-hmm. Pasi, how do mm-hmm. I identify the call of God in my life? How do I identify the call of God in my life? Can God call someone like me? Mm-hmm. There is a uh one of the things that are, as a Christ, as a as a as a child of God, mm. that you should always seek to find, mm. it is to find the purpose of God, because it's only the purposes of God that will fulfill you. Mm. We are not what we do. You're not an accountant. You're not. You're not. You're not just a chef. Mm. You are not all this title. You're not. You're not. You're not just general manager or teacher. Or mm. All those names that we, after everything has been removed, who are you? Mm. All right. That's why we should go back and begin to try and find our purpose. Mm. Our purpose. How do I find my purpose, Pastor? 
there's something that you are normally drawn to yes there's something that you are normally drawn to mm. and it's something that you can even if you are given to do it for free you, you do gladly <laughs> do it for free yeah because i remember i remember you remember the years when they don't just started and mm. i was now in bible school i was in somewhere in a far country mm. doing my business running running uh, as an operations manager in a, in a certain organization mm. and i'm not getting fulfilled and i'm just saying myself it to myself i i know i have something greater than this yes. i know it's the question of everybody every child of god that comes on the face of the earth mm. that is something that come creeps in in every child every human being that is born on this earth yes they keep saying to themselves i am better than this i am better than this i can't be sitting here oppressed mm. you're making money for a company year after year yes and you have no courage to even start your own and they call you all manner of names mm. you know your value mm. but you still stick there because of fear mm. but god has given it to you because everything that i ever that was ever begun mm. anything that has ever stood the test of time mm. what it was begun by men I see people uh, right now we have history of people who have t- a trillion dollar company that started in a garage somewhere yes but they just had a vision and the belief mm. that they can bring this thing mm. but there are other people who have that vision but they are afraid the bible yeah. says that he was not afraid he forsook Egypt mm not fearing the wrath that is verse 27 of uh, hebrews 11 yes not fearing the wrath of the king yeah there are certain things you there will be a, a time in your life that you come t- face to face with yourself and say no mm. i fear nothing mm. if you can get rid of shame if you can get rid of that fear mm. i remember there is a story of a friend of mine i met him after He called me when he was in um, it's a very interesting story. Mm. Uh, I, I I'm afraid to mention his name because I think he might watch this telecast. I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I'll We shall not him. mention your name. <laughs> But I remember him telling me when uh, when we finished uh, in his school he he was in form 6 and uh, no job. He had tamaked is living in this side of Ziwani and he had nobody could give him anything and there was a time he just got tired one day he just got tired he gathered some little money that he had he remember he tells me that he had a truck suit and the money that he had gathered and he had taken a passport you remember that time it was hard to get a passport mm. he took a passport with a truck suit and a few changes he packed his bag and took a, a he was going all the way to south africa he took that he took that uh, that vehicle all the way to zimb his money ended in zimbabwe he and he had vowed he will never come back to he will never come back to kenya he will come back with him succeeding succeeding he he had coined this word this phrase I always believe I can go through walls. Mm. He was telling me that uh in Zimbabwe he found himself in the middle of in the middle of him and the animals were no different. Mm. This is a story he's telling me he's going to write a book. And he tells me that he was around is it Thompson Falls in a national park. In a place he was just asking God he's not asking for food he was asking that he should not be food for the animals <laughs> <laughs> to the animals yes but he prayed and he prayed something an idea just brought, uh, dropped to, to him he, had, he there were some trucks he went and talked to one of the truck drivers he explained the situation he told him don't worry i'll i'll reach you up to mozambique i'm going to some mozambique and i'm going to take you up to mozambique 
from Mozambique. He, to, to cut the long story short, he found himself in South Africa. In South Africa, he tells me that he shared a roundabout because he reached, a pla he reached in, the, in the evening. He shared the roundabout with a madman. He could see vehicles going. A madman, he, 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 was, he found himself in the street of South Africa with nothing. But uh, with, he had his, his uh, certificates and stuff. But he shared, uh, uh, he, he shared, around, he shared his life, his, uh, his night, few nights, with a madman a in a roundabout. Mm. And that's where he used to sleep. Mm. During the day, he would go around the town. Yeah. He saw an advert that there are guys looking for people to volunteer in a, to be sheep attendants. Any, the crew, is it? Uh, not yeah, crew. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, this guy's stewards. In the, mm. So he applied and uh, he was called, and uh, that's uh, the beginning of his journey. And he tells me that thing took him around the world. It was a hard job for a whole year. It was a hard job, and that gave him a mot an opportunity. At one time, he was in uh, he was in Hong Kong, and an opportunity just came, mm. and he took the opportunity. He found himself in Canada, and that's where he has been. He he has raised his family. Mm. But it took him courage to leave his... And Just I've got other start. stories to tell you about and guys I know just mounted courage. And I know we can have so many victory stories, but mm. I know the question, the biggest question mm. that people have always asked is, mm. how do I start? How do I start? Where, where, where do I start? Mm -hmm. Because God comes to Moses mm. and he tells Moses, I, I have heard the cry of my people. people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First of all, he doesn't even give him the assignment. Mm -hmm. He tells him that the place where you are standing mm -hmm. is holy ground. Mm -hmm. Moses has been in that desert for the longest time, mm -hmm. 40 years. Mm -hmm. He's never heard the word holy ground. Mm. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> anywhere uh -huh. and he's been running around all that place mm -hmm. but what i'm amazed by god is mm -hmm. that the fact that god tries to get his attention and i ask myself mm -hmm. how many times has god by the way, tried by to the get way, yeah. just my attention mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and to see if i will, I will turn mm -hmm. so that he reveals himself to mm -hmm. me and he reveals his assignment for but, me by the way i'm getting what you're saying because yes god is just waiting for your turn are you going to turn and face him? Yes. Mm. Because even in this corona, maybe there are some people who yeah. just God is just waiting for you to turn uh -huh. so that I can draw out what I have placed inside, inside of, of you. Inside of you. Uh, because we, mm. we are so busy with our lives. We are so busy with our problems. Mm -hmm, we are so mm. busy with trying to attain things in our lives. Mm -hmm. But sometimes God is just bringing abnormal situations mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like a burning bush that is not consumed. Mm -hmm. Imagine it. So that he can get our attention. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we never turn. We miss always the turn. Mm -hmm. Imagine <laughs> We miss the turn. We miss the turn. Mm -hmm. So we take a longer route mm -hmm. because we missed the turn. To just c turn back and face him. Yes. Mm. Pasi, and I know there are so many people who are in that situation mm -hmm. right yeah, now. You yeah. miss the turn. And my heart, my heart goes out to them. Yes. Very much. Yeah. We miss the turn. Mm -hmm. Even an opportunity. This is an opportunity to serve mm -hmm. in this church. But you miss the turn. Mm -hmm in serving mm -hmm. because God was trying to get your attention. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm amazed that... Mm -hmm. Can you imagine God being God trying mm -hmm. to get my attention? My <laughs> Jesus, the God in... Uh, let me tell you. Yes. It's, it's just disheartening yes. that uh, we have relegated God, yes. the things of God, mm. at the backseat of our cars. At the trunks of our car. Mm. We only remember God when there's crisis. But it is time for us yes. to begin to turn ourselves back mm. and begin to face God. Amen. Because God, the, the mission that God has, mm. God's mission is to, he wants us to turn to him mm. so that he can begin to reveal to us our true identity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our true identity. Hallelujah. To the place where we will have the courage mm. to walk out from everything that has defined us Come on over the years. Amen. 
to walk out from all these things, mm. the, the accolades that mm. are in the world, mm. the shining stuff mm. that we tend to think they are, mm. the, they're the, they're the real thing. Mm. But God wants us to turn to him mm. so that he can begin now to reveal who we truly are. Mm. Because this is exactly what Moses is, mm. is turning to. Mm. He says that now he refuses to be called yeah. s- the son of the Pharaoh's daughter. Mm. And chooses to rather da- to rather be afflict to be afflicted with the children together with the children of Israel mm. to suffer shame mm. to be identified with uh, you, you you know we normally have we normally have that uncle mm. who is not well coordinated mm. and even when we have visitors we don't want to introduce him as mm. he's not one of us he's mm. just he was just passing by yeah. but he's he's your uncle you know mm. that <laughs> he's not even coordinated. <laughs> He's the guy who, 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 who his belt is, uh, mm. he, 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 when he even wears trousers, he's, it's on the other side, you yeah. know, and uh, he comes here and uh, <laughs> he shows himself, yeah. he, the guy who just brings a lot of embarrassment. Yeah. You don't want to be identified with them, mm. but Moses is not ashamed mm. to be identified with the slaves, and that is the beginning mm. of you identifying your gift, your mm. gifting. Because I think God has always been talking mm. and he wants to get your attention. Mm. Mm. Let me ask, Minister mm-hmm. Frank, mm. has this always been the heart of God to be alone with us? Mm-hmm. Has it always been the heart of God to just have that moment mm-hmm. with you? Mm-hmm. remove the chaos remove mm-hmm. Egypt remove mm-hmm. the assignment mm-hmm. you know you are a pastor mm-hmm. remove even the assignment mm-hmm. you go preaching on Sunday imagine just remove it yeah, imagine has this always been the heart of God to just get a moment with you to have his time with you mm-hmm. indeed um, that has always been um, uh-huh. the desire of Imagine uh, because you see, even um, what God gave or what what God gives mm. is a promise. But uh, most often than not, mm. we are led by feelings and emotions, and sometimes, in fact, most of the time. Mm. Mm-hmm. when you are led by emotions or when you are led by feelings because you see it is painful I assure you it is a painful place to be mm. being in a desert mm. where you cannot see God's presence or even relate with his power so you feel like you are all alone but what the mistake we make quite often Mm. is that we allow our emotions Mm -hmm. and our feelings Mm -hmm. to drive us Mm -hmm. but you see God has already given us a promise that I will never leave you Mm. I will never forsake Mm -hmm. you even in that desert situation you Mm -hmm. are in right Mm -hmm. now yes Mm -hmm. I am with you at that point in mm, time. Mm. And we see uh, sometimes it takes maturity yeah. for you to realize that God has been seeking you all along. Right. Because you see, if it was not that desert experience mm. that God took Moses through, he would have missed the turn. He would have never mm. left. Because mm. sometimes we are so comfortable mm. in our comforts. Mm. Mm-hmm. Comfort zones. We are so comfortable. We are so busy mm. pursuing careers and all that. Mm-hmm. And all God is saying, if only you make an about me. turn Just and hear what I have in store for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then that will be the beginning of the Great Commission. The 
because God is eager every day pastor robert mm. every day pastor peter every mm. day mm-hmm. he's eager because you see his ways are not our ways his thoughts are not our thoughts mm. so his desire is for us to turn mm. and focus on things the way he focuses because he's God he knows what is good for him. yeah and the only way mm. and if you look at the bible many many people mm. have been brought to this moment yeah it took the revelator to be in the island Patmos. island of patmos mm-hmm. for god to reveal mm. to him mm-hmm. some deep stuff yeah so even us sometimes you might feel it is i am being like it is almost mm. game over mm. but as we'll be reading mm. god let me just flash forward god is desiring because you see god visits us each and every time mm. he visited the children of israel and saw the kind of oppression mm. they were undergoing and it was actually hurting god mm. seeing how his people were living mm. and you see his desire was moses just turn because i have an assignment for you amen my people are suffering mm. the only time you'll turn is when i'll reveal and i give you that commission and and it's and, and it's important because you say mm-hmm. that because it's only when moses turned that's when god spoke exactly. to him mm-hmm. god did not speak to him until he turned our viewers i hope you're being blessed wherever you are we're going to take a short break and then we're going to come back and just finish up on this expose but let me tell you god is interested in just having a moment and moments with you mm-hmm. having at some alone time and we we'll learned this from jesus mm-hmm. jesus used to come away from uh, get away from the disciples and just have some alone moments with his mm-hmm. father mm-hmm. if jesus being god himself was having alone times with his father mm-hmm. what about you and i we should have our our holy grounds mm-hmm. somewhere mm-hmm. where we meet with god mm-hmm. to just get a revelation of who he is and he's, as he reveals who we are we're going to take a short break and then we're going to come back be blessed